I would like to start with a case like this one. You know, we we had uh, yeah several speakers today talking about bone augmentations procedure, but I also understand from your you know cases that one augmentation procedure is not another one. You know, if we talk about a socket or if we talk about like the extreme vertical augmentations like centimeters, uh, I think some of the participants were impressed about that. Um, yeah, I would just like to ask uh, maybe you first, Antonio, this case, you know, this is, what What would you do? You see that we have, a, a, I mean, a bone defect with a vertical component, probably not as extreme as the one you showed, but what would be your technique there? And what would be your material selection to regenerate that? You are talking about if we are doing an immediate loading, an immediate implant? I'm talking about regenerating the bone. And well, I mean, this how defect, to deal with the soft tissues yeah, as well. This defect is not really a vertical defect because you have almost, you have three walls, almost four. The clothes are pretty close one to each other. Uh, the anatomical base is an, an alveolus, so it will heal perfectly. So probably in this case, because I, uh, I will, well, okay, I will use inside an allograph, outside of the, uh, outside I will use xenograph and then a memory, a resolvable memory. Okay, okay so in that's, this case. for you, this is a case that is, yeah, like a piece of cake for you. Um, no, but, no, a piece of cake. <laughs> no, but, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, but of course, yes, uh, it's uh, of course uh, with still a slight vertical dimension. But um, so you would not take any autogenous bone in this case. You can do it, but you don't need it in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can do it, of course. But if I, inside of the inside of the alveolus, I will prefer to use allograph, of course. Outside. I will use a xenograph in order to maintain the volume because you are, we, when we are using a xenograph, we are not doing a bone regeneration procedure. We are compensating, but this is fine because we are in the aesthetic area. So most of the time in the aesthetic area, what we are looking is for a compensation, not for a bone regeneration, you know? But yes, that's what I will do. Even I can put an immediate implant here, probably. Okay. I will do this option. So yeah. Algirdas, would you have a different approach? Um. No, I would say wouldn't say that uh, I would go in different approach. I would consider also implant placement simultaneously. Yeah, and uh, maybe, but it's also an option just with uh, bone scraper to collect a little bit of yeah. uh, autogenous chips to put around the implant, especially if you have no uh, palatal wall. And uh, then outside we can use. Uh, Allograft or xenograft, just mm -hmm. for volume. But uh, if if it's allograft, I would go also for cortical ones. Yeah, uh, just but just. Do we have a CVCP of this case because we don't know if we have the palatal wall or we don't but have no, it. No, Let's no, say that it's no. We don't no have more the palatal system. wall. We have it. We have it. No, we don't no. have it. Ah, we don't have it. Then yeah. okay. Two and two. It's a two and two. So uh, my. So. Uh, yeah. uh, so that's why uh, I don't think immediate will work in here because you have no lingual plate. So I don't know. In New York, if you do an immediate and it fails, definitely you will be sued by a lawyer and you will be in trouble. So uh, I don't know how. Why do you want to use a xenograft? I'm just not getting it. Why what? Why do you want to use a xenograft? Outside of the bony contour to maintain the volume. Okay, I mean, why don't you to use it? We can, you can use an allograph to mineralize allograph too. Yeah, but can sell us in cortical instead of xeno, no? You, it's another chance. Yeah, we agree. But, but you all agree now that since yeah. there is no palatal bone, like it's like a yeah. screw, you wouldn't do any, an immediate. Exactly. In this yeah. case. You would first uh, regenerate. In the second stage, yes. But that's that's interesting to see that we have three different practitioners with three you know different opinions. It, it's a case I treated myself, and I treated it with with a non-resorbable membrane. I mean, with a, a titanium um, you know reinforcement and and a xenograft. But I also use some autogenous bone chips that I collected on the site um, in order to augment the osteogenic potential. Because a case like this, there is. A, decreased osteogenic potential compared to a socket, for example. But that, I never said that I will use a membrane here. I would use definitely something more fixed, more stable, because you have to keep the, the volume. And the volume is the space. So if you create a good space and you contain it and use a uh, 
opposite to you, uh, an allograft, uh, uh, you will have a good result. When one of them is titanium mesh, I am a big believer of it. Okay. Uh, a medical grade, not the... Uh, okay, and when, when you use a titanium mesh, of course you will maintain the volume during, you know, the regenerative, but do you, you remove the titanium Correct. mesh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you observe some more like long-term resorption then afterwards or? No, that's a that's a very good question. So depending on the patient, if they are young, I would graft on top of it again because once you uh, do the implant preparation, you are going to create the wound healing all over again. So there's going to be more resorption. So I would think that adding more at the time, depending how much bone you have grown, uh, would be a good way to preserve more bone in the long run. Okay, and this second stage grafting would be because you also show some cases where you are first grafting with some autogenous bone, eventually mixed to allograft, and no, then a, yes, autogenous. Oh no, and then as as a second stage, you are using the xenograft. The would your the second way. stage would be a xenograft as well, or? Uh, I have to disappoint you, <laughs> France. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're never going to see what, 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 what would be what would be what would be your uh, like also the cortical? I would do the cortical. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I have a question related to that because I had some questions from the audience. Some countries do not have allograft. So what would be your first choice alternative to allograft? Exactly. So this is maybe an issue when we we have to maybe discuss and, and uh, maybe agree on that with xenograft and cortical chips of allograft, they behave in very similar way. I, I disagree with you. I, tell I disagree you why. too. Because the, the xenograft will never resorb. And uh, the cortical will resorb definitely not within four, six months. It will resorb longer. Ten, ten years. Uh, no, I can show I you uh, historically within a year that we didn't find it anymore mm -hmm. in the percentage. And that's what they did in the, the sinus study. Uh, mm -hmm. And we did a sinus study, but we didn't finish it. And we definitely, you have also different sizes of the cortical bone. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you always have to keep in mind that you can use bigger size of cortical and bigger size of cancellus. So you can play with the sizes of the cancellus and cortical also, uh, adding more of a delay in the resorption for both. So that's something that you should keep in mind that not only you have mineral differences, but also sizes differences. So with the size, mm -hmm. you can reduce also more the resolution. But you know, from what I understand from this discussion is that there is, because you all showed like wonderful cases, and I think there's probably not only one way of doing, and there is also what we master uh, in our hands, uh, the experience, I mean, what is available. It depends on the defect that you are treating. Okay, and, and depending where are you treating, I mean, <laughs> depending on the mechanical environment, this is fundamental when we are working. And if we are working outside of inside of the bony contour, that's why when I use autogenous bone, I'm usually going outside of the bony contour. And I'm in and this kind of defect. This is a favorable defect. Okay. Yeah. And, and you don't have a high mechanical stress in this area. I mean, uh, so, to me, a favorable defect would be a socket with the, yeah, uh, that's socket. the most yeah. favorable or sinus lift. With, but with everything is going to grow here, mm -hmm. bone or, or bone, or you are going to have a volume. Okay. And here you don't have a mechanical stress. But if you are working with just autonomous bone, like I did before, because the, the defect requires that, afterwards, this autonomous bone is vital. So have osteocytes. So we have a, to know that if, we, if the bone is vital, we have the mechanotransduction of these osteocytes, okay? So if we are out of the bony control, we have to do something to protect this bone. And that's why I'm using a xenograph in the second stage. Mm -hmm. But depending on the mechanical environment and depending on the kind of defect that we are treating. Exactly, because yeah. the mechanical, but also the, the biological, the, the osteogenic potential. What, well, no, I'm, I'm talking now about the xenograph, about protecting the, the regenerated bone, because this bone is vital. If, if we have a vital bone, you have osteocytes, and osteocytes acts like, like a neurological set, you know, sensors. Mm -hmm. So, you know what is mechanotransduction? So, because <laughs> mechanotransduction, you are going to have the resorption of this bone. If it's out of the bone control, mm -hmm. it's vital. It's different than if we have the combination of autogenous bone and xenograph, then it will keep the volume. It's different if we are using an allograph. But autogenous bone out of the bone control is always going to be resorbed, depending on the mechanical stress mm -hmm. of the environment. 
That's it's biology. Yeah, I mean, in the majority of practices, you will see in the majority of daily practices, you will see defects like this, or even more. Your cases are extreme that yeah. you don't see them every day in in practices. Uh, the question is, how can we so a message that what kind Good of thing. things that you can do and something that is more. Uh, uh, Absolutely, and I think it's a very important comment because now I would like to ask you another question is how far would you go in regenerating the bone when eventually you have alternatives like maybe graft left, graft less, you know, alternative. I, I, I think, for example, your last case, mm -hmm. you know, we may have, I would probably have proposed my patient to put implants in the anterior region and, yeah. and do. This patient has in the upper maxilla. Uh, prost a fixed prostodontic seven to seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the refer dentist send it to me to do the full reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I do the full reconstruction because in the upper in the upper maxilla we have a full uh, reconstruction in implants. You know, from seven to seven. Mm -hmm. I so we need, yeah, I understand it. Yeah. so that's why I do it, and it's better for the patient. Okay, now let's move to to another topic, and that was also some of the question from the audience is about membranes. You know, and I I know I can imagine that the the membrane selection is highly going to depend on the type of defect mm -hmm. and the shape of the defect and so on. But um, maybe for for you, um, Algirdas, you you know you you use the the mucoderm as a membrane. And from a biological point of view, do you expect this membrane to resorb and become soft tissue, or to remodel and become bone? Uh, exactly, become tissue. The mucoderm is able to thicken soft tissue. We see from few different articles, one to two millimeter, we can increase soft tissue thickness, horizontal or vertical. So it uh, may help, especially in cases when we have very thin tissues. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we have favorable situations like uh, small defects, free wall defects, or we are using some tenting screws or uh, implant with uh, two or four millimeter healing compartment when we just are able to create a space. Mm -hmm. And uh, this membrane is really very nice to handle in uh, comparison with collagen membrane. Uh, and we have a space where and we have thickening uh, of, of soft tissue as well. So and uh, this membrane, it seems uh, what we see from histology, but it revascularizes very fast. So it means that in row of uh, uh, blood vessels is very fast. Mm -hmm. So perhaps this is also additional thing why uh, the bone regeneration looks so nice. here, And plus allogenic bone as well. Yeah, but so stabilizing blood clot. I like this idea from you. Not idea, but to, to like 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 uh, uh, saying from what you saw and maybe from from histological uh, findings, yes, because Cecilia collects and then to fill a lot of blood clot and it stays for some time and then this blood clot is the so best thing for regeneration and in the fastest way it goes. So now I would like to have a little bit of other opinions about let's say soft tissue substitutes. You know you. You work then as, with the mucoderm as a substitute to, I mean, to something to enhance the, the soft tissues. You know, you also show nice cases like on these, but um, what is your opinion on like connective tissue graft or free gingival graft versus any of the substitutes? I would like to use the substitute when I have a keratinized tissue, at least a one millimeter in height, you know, keratinized tissue width and mostly in the upper maxilla. That's the perfect indication. And if you have the deeper recession on the central portion of the canine, let me say, and decreasing towards others, so the Zucchelli and the Sanctis type of envelope flap, you can use the mucoderm. But what I would like to add, in addition to the mucoderm, to hydrate it with EMD or some hyaluronic acid. So we have to improve the cell into the Mucoderm, because we know from the Christian Schmidt study in Germany, uh, published in 2017, I think, it has a 1.5 millimeter thickness, but we see much shrinkage. Why is this happening? We need some signaling and we need some uh, cell signaling uh, boosters, let me say. If I were in the US, I would like to go maybe for the recombinant PDGF, but since we are in Europe, I can go for the EMD 
to hydrate the mucoderm or hyaluronic acid. So for me, the upper maxilla you, is the best indication. You're talking about root coverage here, root right? Root coverage, mm -hmm. yes. And when I go deal with the mandible, now I'm working on uh, how we can use uh, soaked mucoderm with endogene or hyaluronic acid. Uh, but it is not giving you 100% complete root coverage, but of course, in the mean root coverage, if you're talking scientifically, you get really great results. The patients are happy, mostly, because even though you are the micro, best microsurgeon in the world, you go for the second stage but to the palate. So most of the patients are not happy when I propose to go for the uh, connective tissue graft, even with the superficial deepithelialized part. But my favorite is if there's a possibility to go for the tuber, that's it. When it comes to the intrabony defect, I really would use only the connective tissue graft, if I advance the flap, like the connective tissue graft wall or soft tissue wall technique. Otherwise, you saw the case that was uh, flying in the air, no keratinized mucosa on the buccal aspect, and I didn't add any connective tissue graft at all. I just did uh, trust the inner potential of the contained defect and the pure primary closure. Yeah, and I would like to ask you, what about this case, so the first case you showed. So you, you, you show that you do a connective tissue graft or free gingival graft after a year, after a year after the regenerative after. procedure. Why not the, the other way around? First, the, you know, the yeah. soft tissue enhancement and then the regenerative. Uh, when we can go through the surgical video, you see the remnants of the granulation tissue and you have to take really like at least 20, 25 minutes to make everything clean. Mm -hmm. You degranulate the previous uh, graft particles in there from the previous GTR surgery. So let's think biologically. If I make a free gingival graft, what would be my recipient bed? 